this is a little less formal maybe than some of the other videos I've done, but I wanted you to come on a walk with me today. Uh, not just any walk, we're looking for something special. I'm taking a mycology class right now, and mycology is the study of fungi and mushrooms, and my lab partner and I need a few more mushrooms for our collection for our lab, so that's what we're going to look for. It, uh, it rained this weekend, so I'm hoping that there will be some mushrooms out here, and these logs that I'm looking at, uh, logs seem to be a good place to start to look for mushrooms. Oh, oh, okay, there we go. Um, sweet! I wasn't expecting to find one so quick. Awesome, okay. So this one, you can see it's attached right to the wood here. Okay, cool. And if you look underneath, this might not be what you're expecting from a normal mushroom. Uh, most people are familiar, especially the mushrooms that we get in the store, have gills underneath. But this looks like a member of a slightly different group of mushrooms called the polypores. Um, but poly means many, and it's got many pores underneath instead of having gills underneath. Um, and these pores are sort of, well, they're not flat across. Uh, they're sort of angled, so they almost look kind of like teeth. Um, and it's got, let's see here, it's got quite a few scales on the top. See how it's kind of sort of rough looking up here on the, the top of the cap, or what we call the pileus? Um, so I'm wondering if this is what we call a dryad saddle, or the, uh, the scientific name would be um, polyporous squamosis. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Let me see if there's any more around here. Um, oh, hey, is this, yeah, it is, look at that. Okay, um, this one must have gotten, ah, it is the same thing, I think. Yeah, this one must have gotten ripped off of the log. I know there were some people doing work in here. Um, so yeah, this looks like it's probably the same species. Um, the gills are maybe a little worse for the, or not the gills, the pores. Pores are maybe a little worse for the wear here because it's been on the ground and maybe stepped on a little bit. But I think I'll just take this one since it's already separated from the stump. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the camera down so I can put this in a paper bag, but then we can keep walking and looking for some more. <laughs> so of course, um, I kind of found that this was the same way after I took my um, entomology class and I started looking around and seeing insects everywhere. But of course, as soon as you see one mushroom, you start to see all of them. So I'm almost, almost positive now that these are this uh, polyporous squamosa, the dryad saddle, because here's another one at the base of this log. Uh, looks like somebody stepped on that one, but here's another whole one here. Um, and it's definitely really sort of brown scaly on the top of this sort of yellowish cap with these um, very sort of soft, fuzzy, tooth-like pores underneath. Um, definitely, definitely a polypore. And it's got some sort of like nice mold growing on it, which is a different kind of fungus. So here we have one fungus growing on top of another fungus. So that's nice. Um, but I had distracted myself, so I'll be right back. Uh, I also feel like right now might be a good time to remind you that I am collecting these mushrooms for my lab class collection. Uh, I am not foraging to eat right now. Um, I honestly don't know if I would ever trust my mushroom identification skills enough to be out here foraging for edibles, um, just because if you get it wrong, it goes really, really wrong. Uh, poisonous mushrooms are nothing to joke about or mess around with. They are bad news. Um, a lot of them will just flat out kill you, and for some, there isn't even a remedy or an antidote. So once you've consumed it, <laughs> that's that's it, that's the end. Um, and the poisonous ones often look very, very similar to edible ones. Uh, so it takes a lot of concentration and a lot of expert knowledge and a lot of experience to be able to tell them apart. So do not, <laughs> do not just go out and start picking mushrooms in the woods and think about eating them because that is a super bad idea and that is not what I'm here for today. And basically, as soon as I put that first one that I found in a bag, of course, I find more on a log here. So there's one little clump, and here are some more. 
This one's a really nice one here. Uh, so these, these look to me, I'm gonna come back to this first one here. Uh, these look to me like, uh, yeah, and they feel like it too. So these are jelly mushrooms. Um, <laughs> we haven't actually gotten to this part in class yet, but I do know that they belong to the group Ascomycetes. So, whereas the first ones that we found were Basidiomycetes, um, which are the mushrooms that like most people think of when they think of mushrooms, even though those first ones didn't have gills, these are also mushrooms, they're just a very different kind. So, instead of having gills or pores, um, their spores just sort of come off of the surface of these cups here, I think. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my spoon and sort of gently remove these from this log and put them in a bag too. Alrighty. Let's see here. It's always good to have like a spoon or a knife or something um, because a lot of the identifying characteristics of a mushroom might be underground or inside the wood that it's colonizing. Um, so it's good, see like I did here, yeah, to sort of, um, there it is, yeah, I scraped off sort of the wood and the mushroom um, so that I can take the whole thing back into the lab to identify for our collection. And of course, this next big group of logs has yet a different kind of mushroom on it, which is awesome. Um, so here, we can see some more sort of like shelfy type mushrooms. Um, and there's a whole bunch of them here. And you can see they've got very sort of um, striped appearance with the different colors here. Um, if we flip one over here, there we go. Uh, these are also polypores. And, um, so my first thought was, by when I came up on them and seeing the stripes and stuff, that these might be, um, one of the turkey tails, which would be, uh, Trimedes versicolor or something else in the genus Trimedes. Um, but when I flip it over, now I'm thinking that this might be uh, the false turkey tail, which, of course, is just so conveniently confusing. <laughs> um, so I, um, yeah, I think that this is the false one, but I'm going to pick one up and take it into the lab and check it out, just to be sure. Um, here's a good one. So this looks like a very old, broken down, probably not still alive, um, artist's conch, um, which is the species Ganoderma aplanatum. Um, and the, the Ganoderma genus, uh, they're known as varnishes because um, if this were a little fresher, it would be very sort of like shiny. It would look like varnished wood on top. Um, but what's cool about artist conchs is that when they're ripe, I don't know if I'll be able to break this off. Yeah, cool. Um, so when they're ripe, this is another polypore, so it's got pores underneath. Um, this one's so old, it's not really going to work anymore. Um, but people call them artist's conchs because when they're ripe, you can actually like write and draw on the pores here. And um, the pore surface sometimes starts out um, whiter or yellower, and then the marks are very sort of dark brown like this is. Um, so you can actually make sort of two-tone pictures with them. But this one is so old and gross that it probably wouldn't be accepted for my collection. Um, but maybe there's another one on the stump here. Here's a few more sort of like chewed up ones. Um, maybe, oh, oh, wait, here, okay. Um, well, this one got broken off, but still good. Um, hmm, maybe this doesn't, I'm still feeling like it might be one of the Ganodermas um, or some similar shelf fungus, but this one isn't quite as brown on top. So maybe it's a different one. And this poor surface is very dark brown underneath. And it doesn't really, doesn't really bruise when I scrape it with my fingernail. But um, this is a nice, healthy mushroom, even if it did break off from the stump. So I think I'll take this one too. Uh, I think it's important to remember that um, just because you don't see a mushroom doesn't mean there aren't fungi around. Uh, look at this. So it looks like, ah, it's rotting wood, Cheryl. And you would be completely correct. It is rotting wood, um, but this wood is being rotted by a fungus, and this particular pattern 
of rotting is called brown rot, and you would say, oh, well, no, duh. But there is a difference. Um, there are different patterns that woods can rot in, and this one breaks off in sort of um, angular breaks, uh, cubes or rectangles, um, and it's brown and sort of sawdusty. Um, so in this, the cellulose has been broken down by the fungus, um, but the lignin, which creates a lot of the structure of the wood, the lignin remains, and so it's still got enough structure that it breaks in these sort of linear um, and angular chunks. So evidence of fungus, even if there isn't a mushroom right here. So here is a whole big group of those Ganoderma shelf fungi I was talking about. And you can see, as they get older, these are um, fungi that grow multiple years, and so those lines and the rings of different color are kind of like tree rings, so you can sort of age the fungus using them. Okay, well, I know that that wasn't very long, but I now have way more than enough fungi for my mushroom collection for my lab class, so that's good. And I hope you had fun and maybe learned something. Mushrooms are amazing. They come in so many different colors and shapes and kinds. It's just, it's really fascinating, and I'm really excited that I'm taking this class. So uh, hopefully next time I go out on just sort of any kind of walk, I'll have a better handle on what the mushrooms are that I'm seeing, and I can pass that along to you in a video. Um, so until next time, thank you so much for watching, uh, liking the video if you liked it, and subscribing. Don't forget that you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and I'll see you in the next one.